everybody. Welcome to Replay This Week. I am Kyle Hillier. That was Wesley LeBlanc hiding, hiding from the camera. Didn't want to be seen. <laughs> I thought it would be fast enough to turn on my PC so I could have a fun background. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, it was just too fast for you. Uh, let us know how things are going with the audio. Um, we are not done playing The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, to be perfectly clear. Uh, Wes is... Uh, not Wes. Wes is here. Wes is a hero. Yeah. He showed up. Unlike Marcus Stewart, <laughs> who, who, who is <laughs> out on assignment, uh, to be clear. He's, <laughs> he's, uh, he's doing some, some work stuff, so he just wasn't available today. Um, but the, the one of the main reasons I bugged you, Wes, to see if you wanted to be on... Well, first of all, I'm getting so ahead of myself here. We're playing Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, because it's a, a, a game that I adore. And also, I... I'm still, I know you probably moved on with your life, Wes, but I'm still in uh, Lost Crown mode. I'm still playing Prince of Persia of Lost Crown. I'm going back and forth between it and like a dragon. It, it, that's my life now. That's that's like a pretty perfect combo. Uh, very different I kind of do that. I try not to take on two games at a time, but if I do, I do make it as drastic as Metroidvania and RPG, uh, especially a turn-based one. So yeah. I respect that. And also, that's a great place to be. Prince of Persia, Lost Crown is yeah. probably is certainly already and will be one of 2024's best games i think i think it's so, so yeah i think it's a safe bet that it'll it'll be in that discussion for 10 lists and stuff like that but um one yeah. thing i liked about your review oh, Com commander cool hello uh, who can six says it's wes commander cool says it sounds good so that's good to know uh, please speak up if there's uh, any issues there but um one thing i liked about your review hey oscar how's it going uh, Wes, is that you You were sort of like straightforward. You're like, I don't really know Prince of Persia. I've never really yeah. played these games. And that's kind of one of the reasons I like The Lost Crown so much is I'm coming into it without any nostalgia, really. Um, yeah. Which I thought, which was interesting and a, and a cool perspective. But it also led me to be like, well, I kind of want you to see Sands of Time because that's the one. Yeah. This is the Prince of Persia game for most people. Even though it is not the original this is not, this was a, I guess you could say sort of a pivot for Prince of Persia. It wasn't even the first 3D Prince of Persia, but it was, um, it's the one that really, I mean, it changed 3D platforming. If I'm, honestly, like to be truthful, like it, it was completely, a completely different way to platform in a video game that really struck a chord with me personally. And it was, uh, undeniably and heavily influential on the Assassin's Creed series. Um, you know, yeah, the creator of Assassin's Creed of made Sands of Time and then, like, moved into their own... Um, you know, they, they had an original idea they wanted to pursue, which became Prince of Persia. Or, I'm sorry, which became Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I... Um, yeah, pa uh, Patrice uh, Des Desilet. That's the person that created it? Yeah, I mean, he didn't create Prince of Persia. That <laughs> honor belongs to Jordan yeah, Beckner, who wrote the script for this game and is credited um, as a designer on Sands of Time. So yeah. he was heavily involved in Sands of Time. Also consulted on Lost Crown, right? I think yeah, in your he feature, was not, not like, officially, um, but like yeah. he was available and they would show him stuff and he would play it. And, you know, I, I when I spoke to him briefly, I, I just had an email conversation with him about it. Uh, it, it, I got the sense from just those couple of questions that it was very much like he was like, I liked seeing what they were doing, but I wasn't really giving them feedback. It was a more a matter of like, yeah, this this seems great. Keep doing what you guys are doing. <laughs> was sort of the, yeah. what I heard from him, you know. It's cool. So. He still seems like a huge Prince of Persia fan. I mean, it's a franchise he created. Yeah. But like I remember he had quote tweeted my review and was like, he's constantly been plugging lost crown content and just like he's so stoked for the team um which is really cool because sometimes yeah. people who kind of say goodbye to franchises they've created get a little more jaded uh yeah. sometimes about a series uh, looking at god of war maybe <laughs> um but, it, but and so yeah, it's nice it's to see not like, alone in there i mean it, it's tough to no, give up yeah. your baby you know for sure yeah especially if it's a a baby that some people think is better now versus then i have not played any other Prince of Persia, so I don't know where Lost Crown stands uh, comparatively to the rest of them, but I imagine it's got to be way high up there. Yeah. So the thing, Wes, I, I like. I don't know. The thing about this game, right, is we were still in an era of Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, Super Mario 64 inspired platformers. 
that was still yeah. like when you thought of a platformer that's what you thought of and prince of persia came around and it's not a game where you're like trying where you have these like impeccable i mean the controls are very good in this game but it's not like jack and daxter where you have these impeccable controls and you have like the finest uh you know focused like detail where you can land a character on a platform prince of persia yeah. was more about like like going through an obstacle course it almost felt more like a rhythm game which was what made it unique and different and it it just looks the animation i still think looks great um they they yes, managed to pull agree. off uh, an animation of like running on a wall that looks makes it look like a human could actually do that, but that's not a thing that you can do, you know. But uh, it was the kind of game where like this action right here, where you run along the wall, that was like something that when I played games after this, I was like I missed that mechanic, you know. Like yeah. I've had that like t uh, what was uh, Tears of the Kingdom, the uh, Ultra Hand this year was another one where it's like after I played a game after Tears of the Kingdom, I was like, ah, kind of wish I had Ultra Hand, <laughs> you know? In every game. Yeah, that's an easy add, too. More companies need to get yeah. on that. Or Ascend, even. They did. They, they pulled off, too. But Ascend, like, actually, though. Like, we do need that in yeah. every game. <laughs> but, like, really, like, th it all comes down to this right here, right? Like, any other platformer, you would be like, oh, I need to jump over there. But Sands of Time, this is what the action became. And it just feels really smooth and looks cool, and and like then 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 it became a combination of things of like oh I need to run and jump off a wall and grab that and spin and it's it was less about making sure you're moving the control stick to perfectly get a character exactly where they needed to go as much as it was yeah. like executing a series of acrobatic uh, events successfully. Um, and I love that's cool. It. That's it's, kind of what yeah. uh, I love most about. The Lost Crown's like hardest challenges is it's not like an individual platforming move. It's how can you uh, combo together like thirty seconds of moves yeah. to get to the end. And if you mess up, you start back at the beginning. And that's and that is the sort of Prince of Persia, I guess you could say, like DNA that's in there is like yeah, that's that feels a little like Prince of Persia in that way. Even though it's a two D game, I mean they're they're so different uh, in so many ways. Um, what was Prince of Persia before this? I mean, I know like on the like in the 80s when it first started, it was like a very slow 2D platformer-esque type thing. Um, but I don't, I don't know what came before Sands of Time, to be honest. I mean, before Sands of Time, there was Prince of Persia 3D on Dreamcast, which was just a very forgettable 3D platformer that just was like... I watched... I've, I've never played it. I looked at footage of it right before Lost Crown was coming out, and it just... It looks so... It does not look good. <laughs> it looks... It looks pretty rough. Um... And then before that, it was it were those it was those two D games, and the big selling point of those. Oh, I didn't mean to climb that pillar. Was um, that help if I took out my swords. Uh, was like, uh, the rotoscoped animation. That was the big yeah. thing about the original Prince of Persia. Is Mechner rotoscoped all the animation? I believe famously he used his brother. He just like filmed his brother jumping around on things outside, you know. So and then cool. the game you had, I think it was... I've never really played the original in earnest. I've, I've played versions of it. I had friends who had Apple computers growing up who had who had it, and I played it. Uh, but, like, I never beat it, you know, or anything like that. And, uh... It was, um... It's... Uh, I Like you mentioned earlier, my review kind of starts off with me mentioning, like, there's a long history of Prince of Persia, and I don't know any of it. Yeah. Um, and I mentioned that line because before writing my review, I just wanted to kind of dig into the series a little bit. And I didn't even realize this wasn't like Prince of Persia is so synonymous with Ubisoft that I thought Ubisoft created Prince of Persia, maybe in like oh. the early two thousands. And then when I realized that Jordan Mechter did, I think in, I think the first one came out in like 89 or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. My mind was blown. I had no idea. Like I just don't ever hear Prince of Persia outside of like its connection to Ubisoft. Um, yeah. They, they, <laughs> They did that thing that I, I feel like Netflix does so much now, where it's like uh, they'll buy a sh right, they'll buy a show like Arrest Development is always one I think of a, a show that had three seasons, and then they they purchased the rights, you know, and, and developed the fourth season. So they slapped a stamp that said like Netflix yeah. original. Netflix. <laughs> yeah, that's kind yeah. of what Ubisoft did with Prince of Persia. <laughs> and this Sands of Time is a Ubisoft published and developed game, I assume. Yes. Yeah. 
internally. Do you know which Ubisoft studio? Uh, Montreal. Ubisoft Montreal. Okay. That's right. Oh, and they're doing the remake, I think, now. Yes, uh, a remake of Sands of Time has been in the works for a while. From I, yeah, I, no, I, think, I think it's Ubisoft a completely stuff. different internal yeah. Ubisoft developer. Right? It was Ubisoft India. Right. Um, That's changed. But it got delayed and they got moved off of it. Um, I'm going to look up now. Yeah, which it's like I'm very curious to see what is happening with that. Because, I mean, at the announcement of that, I was very excited for it. I, I love this yeah. game. Like Marcus and I have talked about it a couple times. When I think about, like, um, my favorite games of this era, um, you know, that PS2, Xbox, GameCube era, Sands of Time is probably in my top five, maybe? Like it's, wow, it, that's it's a, a great game. era, too. So What did you say? That's an amazing era, so that's a yeah. big statement. But no, it, it is one that really resonated with me, because I really liked platformers, but I think I had just hit a point where I was ready for something new, and... Yep. Uh, Prince of Persia showed up, you know, and, and really try and really showed something new and interesting sort of within that genre. And also, Jordan Mechner, before he even made video games, has always been kind of someone who wanted to be in the film industry and Ooh. wanted to be a screenwriter. Um, so th he was always very focused on story. So he, he wrote this game's story um, very much like you would approach like a, a, a film. Which is like, sounds silly now, but in 2003, yeah, it did feel unique. Like there is, there is an interesting story. There's this game has a romance in it, which if like if you can think about like Whoa. a 2003 video game with a legitimate romance that builds over the course of a game, it was like that's that just was unheard of <laughs> at that point, yeah. you know. Um, it is Ubisoft Montreal working on the remake now. They took oh, over in May 2022. Uh, and it was Ubisoft, uh, not Ubisoft India, U Ubisoft um, Mumbai, which okay. is, you know, in India. Uh -oh. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's interesting. And of course, that's the other big crazy thing about Sands of Time is that you could manipulate time. You could rewind time and undo mistakes. I want that in every game. I know. That's another, like I said, that's another one of those things that after playing this game, I would instinctively like pull the left trigger when I died or something yeah. in a game afterward to like rewind time. And I was like, Oh right. That, that was a, that was just a Sands of time thing. Okay. Right. I, got, I got just infected everything I played afterward, which to me is like, becomes a sign of like something was that it was truly innovative in that way. It's like, it really yeah, made sure. you sort of, it infected the way you think about how video games should play. So this yeah. is um, the Prince who, was an unnamed protagonist until the Lost Crown. <laughs> like that's the first time the prince has had a name. Oh, uh, which was. But this kind of is you are playing as the actual Prince of Persia. You are the Prince of Persia. That's Lost, the, Lost Crown was yeah. the first one where you aren't playing as the Prince of Persia. Uh, you're trying yeah. to save the Prince of Persia. And that's uh, Farah, who like you. I mean, we don't. I don't know if we have to get into like the story necessarily, but you unleash the sands of time, and it like ruined her whole. Uh, world, her whole um, kingdom, and so she's mm. like mad at you, understandably. <laughs> you yeah, know? that checks out. And and she's like basically the only human here, and you interact with her a lot and stuff like that. And then it's a uh, romance uh, can bloom on the battlefield. It turns out, and they uh, they get they get together. They get they get along by the end. But there's a nice uh, uh, sort romantic of, comedy build up to it. Yeah, genuinely. Like I think I think they were successful. Like maybe if I played it today, I'd be like, you know what? Maybe I'm giving it a little bit too much credit, but in 2003, <laughs> I, I was I was impressed by it, you know. Yeah. But uh, how's the that, combat like? Uh, is it good still, or is it? Combat is not, the thing. Uh, I, as I play this, I played through the intro because I always I always get annoyed when we do look backs at stuff like this, where the we watch like half the episode is us just watching cutscenes, yeah. you know, from the intro of the game. So I've played about you know 45 minutes or so already. And combat is the one thing that, like, feels pretty uh, stale, I guess you could say, in that it's, like, it is very simple. It looks cool, um, but there's just not much to it. Yeah, it's kind of uh, par for the course, I feel like, returning to this era. There are yeah. some instances where combat uh, holds up for me, but, like, 
uh, for the most part, that's usually where I'm like, oh yeah, this is a game that's 20 years old. Yeah. But it le- but it does <clears throat> it does continue to look cool at least. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is nice. I like that the uh, like the camera changing too. That's like uh, very cool. Yeah, it's sort of showing you, um, especially in that last instance, like kind of like here's the path you need to take, you know? Because yeah. you got to remember, like at this time, we didn't really understand that. Like at this in this era, it's like, oh, I guess I, I'm just supposed to jump down, you know? <laughs> like there's a path I need to take to get to the middle of this room. I don't, I don't know, I don't think so. Mario would just jump down. See, can I? I don't know if this is even the right way. Would stop it, nothing to possess oh yeah, and the prince, uh, the sort of the conceit of the game is he's narrating. He's te- you meet Farah in the beginning, um, seemingly from the future, which you know gets explained later, and he's sort of telling her the story. So like the narration actually has context for you talking to to Farah, and then the the other thing I like is when you die. <laughs> The prince will be like, oh, wait, actually, I don't think that's how it happened. I, maybe I'm misremembering it, <laughs> like, which yeah. I just, I always thought that was really funny. I feel like I played something recently that did that, but I don't know. Prince Persia invented it, man. He did it first. This is cool. Uh, this is like so Assassin's Creed, which now yes. I guess is yeah. Assassin's Creed is so Prince of Persia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of, I remember when Assassin's Creed 2 came out, I think it was 2, and they had a couple of um scenes where it was like it was all about like like platforming kind of like it was just this long trail of like there's a special unlock here if you go through this whole path and i always like really sought those sequences out because i was such a prince of persia fan and i was like they're not making prince of persia right now they're making assassin's creed so this is what i get this is if i want assassin if i want prince of persia this is what i have to play you know so did Prince of Persia go through like a period where it just wasn't hidden anymore? Because Lost Crown was the first one in, well, almost over a decade? Yeah, no, the, not- the the gap between, I guess you could say the Prince of Persia's born of Sands of Time, right? Like Sands of Time kicked yeah. off a whole sort of bunch of Prince of Persia games. I don't remember the exact... Um, amount of years but it was the longest gap that prince of persia has ever had because they made um when the movie came out uh written by jordan mechner by the way when the movie came out um there was a there was a prince of persia game it wasn't like a licensed game it was weird what they did because they were like um they were basically like we're gonna make a we're gonna have a prince of persia game come out the same time as the movie but it's not gonna have anything to do with the movie but it did mm. feel a little different. It felt like a little rushed, politely, right? It felt like they were sort of uh, trying hard to hit that um, that movie deadline. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. It's not a terrible game. But um, then and then that was that was like the last one for a long time. Um, then then it was like it, there there was a remake of the original Prince of Persia sequel, I think. And then um, and otherwise it was you know then it was Lost Crown. See, I think I go this way. And so we are in just what a defunct castle palace thing, right? Yeah, now? this is like the uh, the um, the palace that you've you know essentially demolished by mistake. And apologies if this is going slow. Let's see, this is what am I supposed to do here? Because I can't, um, I can't run that way because there's a there's a whole oh i know what i need to do i just need to just need to shimmy duke Faison says he played two they played two thrones the most out of the trilogy oh, so it, this is it's sands of time forgotten sands maybe uh maybe? no it's sands of times warrior within two crowns ah. hmm. and then prince of persia 2008 <clears throat> which is fantastic uh, I don't need to dive into that too much right now. That one was a lot different, uh, but really good, and it kind of underrated at the time. It, it came out, and people were kind of disappointed in it, uh, but I loved it and continue to love it. It's one of those kind of games. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I see. Yeah, and then, then uh, oh, also by games. Montreal. Yeah, that one's really cool. That one looks really beautiful. Um, do I go down? Here? Yeah, very um, painterly. Yeah, what's the word? Borderlands is art style with the black outlines on everything. Yeah. Forget the. There's a word for it. Here we go. Let's, see. Let's 
get some water real quick. Because it's funny, the thing about the combat is like... Oh, these... Oh, let's see. Use the dagger power tap L for slow motion to tap on the freeze enemy. Okay. Oh, that's cool. See, like, you have all these abilities, but I never really... Uh-oh. Okay. Use a lot of them. Like, the thing you want to do, I found, is you just sort of... This move was very like uh, unique where you jump you vault off their shoulders yeah like that was something i had never really done in a game at that time but i think these i think the women won't let you do that oh no are okay. these like pharah or something no these or are like um uh people that have been infected by the sands uh so these are like women who worked in the in the palace and you have to you have to retrieve the sands from them by just you know stabbing them in the chest of mm. course Mustached one, cell shading. Yes, that's the word I was looking for there earlier. Yeah. And opportunist one eight one eight two asks, "What happened to Majora's Mask?" It's not going anywhere. Yes. Marcus is on uh, a work trip, basically, and unable to stream today. So, uh, you guys will be returning back to Majora's Mask next week. Yeah, I think so. Unless something. Oh, let's see. Okay. Then I can, I can have oh, the one. music. Oh, can you hear the music? Yeah. I have a But even this, I feel like, was somewhat influential on the on Assassin's Creed as well, the combat, because it is more, it's a little more weight and for something to happen and go for your opening yeah. when it exists. Yeah, very, very Assassin's Creed. The early entries are just straight up counter games. Yeah. There's no, no need to do anything else. Because this is the, again, like I'm just sort of reminiscing about the era. I mean, this is like, you know, this is Devil May Cry Zone. You know, which is a much more like get in there, just hit attack as much as possible. You know, yeah. Where this is like three button presses right here. You know, just to sort of knock out that enemy. Yeah, the women are the ones that are tough. Weepod says they see if Kyle finally got his Sands of Time replay that nobody in the GI staff wanted to do with him <laughs> back in the day. Oh, that's old school. Yeah, we used to do uh, replay showdowns where we would have like a series of multiplayer games and. You know, the winner would get to do a super replay. And uh, my first year, I wanted to do Sands of Time. Um, I lost. I always lost. Mm. So it was, it, the game was always against me. It was never my fault. It was always somebody else's yeah. fault. <laughs> Rex a million, 1979. Wasn't the original Assassin's Creed going to be a new Prince of Persia game? Yes. I believe it started off as a Prince of Persia game before they kind before. of realized it yeah. needed to be its own thing. Which, um, you know, I, I'm glad it was. Yeah. I'm sure Ubisoft's very glad as well. Yeah, yeah. And I'm collecting these things for... I get, I get more slow motion opportunities if I, if I collect mm. those. Yeah, I haven't really... I'm so good at the game, Wes, that I haven't really had to yeah, use, I could... uh, rewind too much. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd... I mean, you're like the best gamer here at Game Informer. Of course oh, you wouldn't be right? using it. <laughs> My reputation has changed. <laughs> Gleepod says Hanson's game choices were sure something for the showdown. <laughs> yeah. Did he... Uh... So you, you picked a game? Is, are they talking about the games Hanson would pick for showdown or the game he would pick if he won? Okay, so you would pick... You would make a pitch. Like, I was mm -hmm. like, I want to super replay Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. That's what I would like to, to fully play. And then someone else would be like, I think Dan Reichert at the time was like, I want to re I want to do Half-Life. I've never played the original Half-Life. Here's an excuse for me to play Half-Life. And, uh, and then we would do a series of, like, multiplayer games over the course of a couple weeks. And then the winner would get to play. You know, mm. whoever won all the tournaments would play their game. And, um, yeah, I know... I know Dan won, I think, that first year. Uh, so he he played through Half Life later. But yeah, uh, Ben Hansen picked. He did have some strange uh, multiplayer games that he tracked <laughs> down. Like I think one was like this, like mech. Like there was this like mech multiplayer game that you would unlock at like forty hours into Xeno Gears <laughs> and oh, stuff no. like that. That was like what? <laughs> oh, let's see. So I'm supposed to pull this thing. I remember the camera sort of showed me this and was like, this is a thing. This is a thing you got to do. But I don't know why. I don't know why I need to move it. Do you need to? Oh, hmm.
unless oh, so one of those is... puzzles where you reverse time while you're on top of it and it no, moves with you or something the game, it never gets that fancy oh here we go oh that was just a door mm. like the rewind power is is purely to fix mistakes uh exclusively oh, okay so like instead of like dying you could die but instead you know you would just pull yourself out of danger like that it wasn't maybe it was used in puzzle solving more later but certainly in this first game like that was almost its exclusive purpose and this is uh yeah, I... let's see oh. so I, I had a vision of that earlier it's like teasing that I think I played a Prince of Persia briefly on PSP. I mean, they released, I think, Two Crowns. I think they released a version of Two Crowns on PSP. Because I, I think I played that version in full. Because I liked Prince of Persia so much that I was like, oh, I play it when it comes out. And then since they had a slightly different version on PSP, I was like, well, I'll play that too. Yeah. Because <laughs> I just want more Prince of Persia. I see Revelations Battle of Prince of Persia. Oh, no, that's on DS. Oh, shit. Rival Swords. That's it. Let me see here. I want to say it was Warrior Within. Yeah, Warrior Within's a funny one because... Oh, no. It was Two Thrones. I remember him having his... I see in the cover art he has, like, blade, a blade chain thing that okay, comes out yeah, of his that arm. was Two Thrones, yeah. I'm tempted to just look. This is a puzzle. I'm tempted to just look up the solution so that I'm not spending a thousand years like rotating gears and stuff here. Yeah. But yeah, this this kind of became a staple. Is like you'd have your combat moments, you have your platforming moments, and then you'd have a big sort of environmental puzzle. Mm. Boy, see, this is so complicated. <laughs> I don't remember how to Make do sure this. Make sure you pick them up in the right order. Make sure you pick them up in the right order. Okay. That's it. You've got the first I, I will happily accept uh, tips from chat three. if anyone has any for me. Remember, pay attention to the grooves. <laughs> this guy is serious. <laughs> pay attention to the grooves. Can I not collect this one? And this one lifts me up, I think. Right? Okay. One break turns the platform. Can I turn on subtitles, I wonder, actually? Let's see. This is that, that era. Five. Are they going to have uh, subtitles? I don't know. Shall I go on? I don't think so. I don't think so. To quote. That's pretty wild, Ella. like playing old games and seeing how. Like, no subtitles. Is wild. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, the original Assassin's Creed. I remember yeah. that being so frustrating. No subtitles. Okay, yeah. Do I like lift this thing all the way up? Is that what I'm doing? And doing? I'm not doing it one by one, am I? Okay. Thank you, sir. Does this mean I drop it off here? Careful. Think ahead. Think ahead. Careful. Think ahead. But that one just goes right there, doesn't it? Wes, don't you know? Why aren't you helping me? <laughs> I'm just kidding, Wes. I'm just kidding. I'm yeah. actually I'm actually looking up. Oh, online. are you? I was just kidding. Trying to. <laughs> I'm only seeing one video and it's 13 minutes long. And oh, there's no boy. way that this puzzle takes that long. Do you know where we're at in the game? Like what this? It's pretty early at this point. Let's see. Why is it? Yeah. Why is it lighting up there? Oh, I see. Okay. I think I see anyway. Because that one's there. Okay. So where are the other thing about bombs? Are they like lower down? Okay. Oh, I want to go down. Because okay. the I think what I want to do is get the rods in the four appropriate places. Okay. Mm. I love puzzle solving, but like I I I 
hate puzzle solving, like, while streaming, because I feel like I'm just boring everybody to death. Okay. Hey, this, this, things are working. Look at that. You don't need a guide. You're pro. Game Informer's best gamer. <laughs> Famously, Wes, quote unquote, uh, I I would lose those uh, super replay showdowns so consistently that I was and I would if you look back at like old episodes of replay, I would like screw them up so often that it really was just like maybe Kyle shouldn't have the controller is like was like the sentiment a lot. Oh, of the time. <laughs> okay, it's see. hard work playing on a stream. It's hard, you guys. All right, let's see. So I, I need to be able to lower them all down. Oh, can I reset it? I wonder. Because now I feel like I, ha I might have a handle on things. Because I can't. I don't think I can go down again, right? No, I can't go down there. It just won't let me. Because that guy yelled at me when he first started. He's like, "I'll reset it for you." Like, could he actually do that now? That that would that would help me quite a bit. Duke Faison says, you were great in Vampire Hunter D and Sonic 06. Well, yeah, I didn't play Vampire Hunter D. That was, that was all Reiner. <laughs> Although I did, we did, we passed the controller in Sonic 06, which was a lot of fun. Uh, that game wasn't Vampire fun. Hunter I'm just D. saying, like, the sort of hanging out with people that you like, that part was fun. That game's freaking terrible. Oh, <laughs> just... um, yeah, PlayStation 1. Oh, yeah, see, this is why he was telling me to think ahead, because, like, now I'm kind of stuck. Let's see. Does it have a skip puzzle option, like the no. last round? <laughs> this is 2003, man. We didn't have those kind of... Uh, we didn't have that kind of stuff. But I promise this game is cool, Wes. I know I'm not convincing you. Oh no, it looks cool. I know I can tell I would love it. <laughs> um, and, like, it's always that thing. I bet, I, like, like I said, I always I hate solving puzzles on a stream because I'm always like, ah, oh, this like I'm 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 taking so long. This is taking forever. But every time I look at the chat, right, you guys, you're like, yeah, whatever. Take it doesn't matter. Like take your time. <laughs> like that's what. Yeah. I just it's it's me getting in my own head of like, what if I, I don't this I'm wasting everybody's time. Nobody wants to be here. We have a great community. So I gotta go. Oh, I still can't turn? Oh, boy. Okay. I am. T I, I almost what? tempted to load a save, though, just to reset. Because, like, I feel like I could... Maybe if I started from scratch, I would I would feel a lot better about um, knowing what to do. I wonder if I can do that, actually. Let's try that. I did save you recently. Me to leave. Because what it was is like I need, I picked up the time. third one when I was needed to pick up the fourth one first, if that makes sense. Ah, that was the mistake I made. You can do it, says Duke Faison. Thank you, Duke Faison, for your faith. I appreciate it. I have a sixteen-step puzzle for it if you need it. Are you for sixteen steps? Yeah. I mean, I'll take it. Like, cause I'd rather okay. I don't I'd rather just solve it. You know. Wow, I don't remember it being that many steps. Which one had the door? How many are there? There's quite a few actually. Here's the first puzzle. Figure out which one's hiding the door. There we go. Okay. Well, you see, that's the kind of puzzle stuff I like. It's like I just wanna I wanna solve platforming puzzles. My problem with puzzles like this one, Ron, is I'm always, always overthinking it. Uh, and then I forget that, like, you just have to use what the, the team has put in front of you. Yeah. I run into this problem a lot with uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, I'm trying so hard to do something, and then I'm like, why don't I just use the fan and the little bird flight platform they gave me to go across? Yeah. And then I do, and it works. Zelda, in particular, I was, I think it was... Uh, Brian Vor, former game former editor, who's who's written some freelance stuff for us in recent years. When, I, we were talking about, I think Skyward Sword had come out or something, and he said to me like, 
In Zelda, like if you're if it's too hard the puzzle, then you're doing it wrong. And I always yeah. like keep that in mind because it's like it's like actually I don't think I'm supposed to get that boulder to like use physics to bounce off that wall. It's like that's yeah. I don't think that's actually what you're supposed to do, you know. And it always it does always become like you know easier. And uh, yeah, Nate Nate V twelve sixteen says I love this game and it's one of the greatest games of all time. But this puzzle is frustrating, <laughs> so that's uh, reassuring. And uh, thank you for gifting out the the tub, uh, the sub, the tub. Did you send Crater Gaming a tub, Duke Faison? Why'd you send him a tub? That's weird. All right, step one is step on the lit floor switch to grab the first tube. The first tube, okay. All right, so this guy's gonna yell at us a bunch. All right, so I pick up that one. That's the first step? Yes. All right, what's next? Use the rotation crank to rotate the platform clockwise one notch. All right, this is going well so far. Step three, use the ascension crank to ascend the platform one notch. Okay, this is what I did last time so far. Use the rotation crank to rotate the platform counterclockwise three notches. One, <laughs> two, three, okay. Uh, descend it one notch. All right, things are happening. And now we are going to step on the lit floor to grab the second tube. Second tube acquired. I did get that part uh, right, so to speak, and then I knew I needed to grab that one first. That's what I messed up last mm. time. Okay. Uh, ascend the platform one notch. Okay. Rotate the platform clockwise two notches. One. Two. And then ascend the platform two notches. Two. Interesting. Actually, not that interesting, considering. Yeah. And now we're going to grab the third tube. God, Wes, you're a genius. I used to be a guide writer. <laughs> I've got all this info just stored in my head. Who did you, who are you writing guides for? I wrote a ton of guides for IGN. Basically, in the two years leading up to working at Game Informer, I, I did a lot at IGN, like news, features, and guides, but I was always working on a guide. Cool. Um, which is fun, because I have friends that like use them, and they're like, hey, it's your name. <laughs> All right, now what? Um, let's see. Third two, rotate the platform clockwise one notch. Okay. Lower. Uh, descend the platform one notch. Oh, and then next up is grabbing the fourth tube. This is exciting, man. We almost done it. And by we, I mean whoever wrote that guide for us. Thank you, sir. Or ma'am. Uh, ascend the platform one notch. I think I think I can solve it from here, Wes. You know. <laughs> All right, you got this. All it took was everything leading up to the last two steps that I was solved it. <laughs> Shout out to, uh, I guess Gamespot staff. Oh no, uh, Doug Radcliffe, there we 2006 go. Gamespot, uh, Sands of Time walkthrough. Thank you, Doug Radcliffe. You saved us. A good guide. Uh, almost 20 years later, and it still works flawlessly. Now the question will be, will it work for the remake? Oh, true. There's no way. Well, this like this puzzle like gets this changed puzzle. in the remake pretty yeah. significantly, I think, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. this is There's a lot happening here. I don't remember all this. And we'll stream for another 20 minutes or so. We'll keep today to an hour. This guy's not happy. <laughs> okay, how do I get over there? All right. Oh, I think he dies. Oh, yeah, that's. This is the you know God of War. That voice era. actor was putting it everything into that. <laughs> He's getting his money. Chop chop. There we go. 
split in two, baby. I love the sound design of this era of games. Like, you can so clearly hear the single noise that every action makes. <laughs> right. They just kind of all ins inserted them all just sort of flat. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, like oh, everyone's wearing headphones. We got, like, everyone's got, like, mono TVs. Like, we don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> I learned recently that in um, Metal Gear Solid 1, uh, there's a... I don't, have you played Metal Gear Solid 1, Wes? I don't know if you... I haven't, no. Okay. It's one of my gaming whales is the Metal Gear Solid. Get to series. it right after the nine Yakuza games, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but there was... Um, there's a fight in that game that... Uh, which was interesting for the era in that, like, you had to listen for left and right channels in your, you know, speakers. Mm. It's like, oh, the helicopter's over here. I gotta shoot over to the right. And if you didn't have a stereo TV, which was common, you know, back then, um, there was actually dialogue in the game that would be like, "Oh, you don't have a, you don't have a, a stereo TV. Oh, well, good luck. I hope Loser. you're able to, I hope you're able to defeat this fight." <laughs> which I was like, "That's hilarious." That's funny. I always loved Kojima. Metal Gear. Uh, at, when they got to, by the time they got to five, they weren't doing it so much anymore. But certainly in the first two. They were more than happy to sort of break the fourth wall uh, in instances yeah. like that, and I always, I always love I mean, that. One of them uh, has the boss, uh, Psycho Mantis, right? Yeah, that's that Melgar Solid. One. Yeah. Your... yeah. It's very cool. Yeah. For all the pomp and circumstance of Kojima, he does some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Now this, this is another. This is like, you know, the original game had a lot of, like, these obstacle courses with, like, blades and stuff like that. And this is very much a thing that they were able to adapt into Lost Crown pretty successfully, I feel like. is like, these yeah. are just, like, the little gauntlets that you do occasionally. Um, where, you you know, there's, like, blades and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, which I really enjoy those when I come across them in Lost Crown. Like, I, I'm always oh, they're very so excited good. to take them on. How far are you in Lost Crown? Uh, oh, I beat the Python. Um, I think I'm okay, like, you're like 10 hours or something. Oh, shit, 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 shit. Yeah, you're like halfway, maybe even a little bit further through. Okay. Yeah, it feels, feels about halfway. Did you get double jump yet? Yeah. I. Is it yeah. weird that I didn't want to say the term double jump because I felt like that was almost a spoiler, but it's like... Oh. It's a Metroidvania, <laughs> like... Yeah, you get a double jump it's, at some point, you know. Yeah, it's pretty clear too. You'll get to sections where it's like, well, not yet. Yes, absolutely, yeah. But it is, um, it is, man. When you're playing a Metroidvania, it's like that's when the game starts. When you get that double yes. jump, you know, and it's like it feels so good. And Lost Ground yeah. has you gotta have uh, a double jump. Gotta have like a some kind of dash or like left right movement real yeah. fast. Lost Crown has um, a fantastic double jump animation where he, mm -hmm. he flips sideways. And I was like, ah, oh, that looks so cool. I love that. Yeah. It's like a Captain Falcon backflip or something. Yeah. Where he does, it like, is so scissor, good. I hope people don't forget thing, about yeah. it at the end of the year. What'd you say? I hope people don't forget about Lost Crown at the end of the year. I'm going to do my best not to when it's time for like top 10 debates and all that kind of stuff. It's it's a treat. Yeah. I Yeah. It's like... I think, I mean, you never, you know, you don't want to make any assumptions about the rest of the year, but I, I, I would be surprised if it didn't end up on my own, on my own list, you know, because I love that genre and it's the, it's the best one I've played since Dread, like, you know. Yeah. It's my, I give it a nine five, and I've only yeah. ever given that to Liza P here, so it is technically my second, either first or second favorite game I've reviewed for Game Informer. So it should be on my top ten, unless this year turns out to be. Yeah. Somehow even better than last year. Yeah, uh, it, could, it could happen. And yeah. This is another little silly thing that I, I don't know if Sands of Time originated, honestly. But I sort of equate it to Sands of Time in that if you're in a, like a little arena, you come into a room, you have to kill 10 enemies or whatever. It gives you a very specific animation when you've completed the 10 enemies, right? Like oh, Arkham, cool. like a finishing kill type thing. Yeah, Arkham I, does it the best, arguably. Where the last enemy you fight, it goes in a slow motion, and you like take them out, yeah. and then you're like, okay, I've defeated all the enemies, and like that's a pretty common thing. And I think it's like it's just good design to sort of let the player know, like, hey, you're done. You you got all the enemies. Good yeah. job. Um, 
but this is for me at least this is where i sort of remember that feeling like a mechanic like a way to communicate yeah. to the player oh i didn't mean to walk in there again because <laughs> the prince actually he literally it, the it, it it you know the camera zooms in on him and he puts his swords away I'll start the story from here. Let's Jane Whippen says, uh, "Lost." I hear Lost Crown is a long one, maybe as long as Hollow Knight. I've not beaten Hollow Knight, but Lost Crown took me 25 hours to get to roll credits, and Ooh. I was at about 80 percent done on the map. I think Hollow Crown, uh, Hollow Knight, I think might be longer. Hollow yeah, I've heard so Hollow Crown is a right. pretty beefy game. <laughs> we keep. Going. You said Hollow Crown too. Oh dang! <laughs> yeah, we we both said it. That's funny. I think I can just get up there, right? Uh, yeah, Nickel Canvas says Max Payne did that, talking about you know the alert of when you defeated all the yeah. enemies. Uh, I think you're right, and Max Payne did come out first, so maybe. But I, I think I might have played Prince before Max Payne. Maybe I'm trying to think back, I I played them around the same time. I played the PS2 version of Max Payne. That that's what I played because uh, I was not a PC guy. I'm 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 stuck in that moment, Wes, where we're playing Prince of Persia. I will. This is me returning this game for an hour to get a lovely taste of it. I'm not going to continue this save, right? I'm not going to go back mm. and play through all of Sansa time. Maybe I will. Who knows? But but you want to. <laughs> but I, and I'm struck because down there is like a thing that I could pick up. You know, if I don't go back down there and get it, I'm going to miss it. But it's like it doesn't matter. You're not going to return yeah. to the save. But. It's shiny and it's there. Oh, I think I gotta go get it. Let me see. Come on. Everyone Duke says we were. Me. Duke Faison says we were calling two thrones two crown. Oh, were we really? Well. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, we totally were. And you know what? Actually, I don't think I can get down there. I don't think there's a way to do it. Cause this ain't this ain't this ain't Jack and Daxter, ladies and gentlemen. I can't just jump over there. You know. I gotta I gotta figure out a way to run over there. I don't think I can. I think I missed it. Oh well. Say Libby. Duke phase on. Are you excited for Outcast 2? Uh what is Outcast 2? Is that is that the game that the the open world game that I did a new gameplay today for is right? That's what you're talking about? Uh Oh, I think so, yeah, yeah. I'm interested in it. I don't know if I would say excited. Outcast um, a new beginning. I keep yeah. getting mixed up with Outlast, and I'm like, are we playing Outlast 2 on stream? Because <laughs> They also, yeah, it was called Outcast Two, but then they changed the name to Outcast New Beginning at some point because they, they mm -hmm. are. I mean, I think, I think I, I spoke to them. I think they even said as much as like, we see this as an entry point. This isn't a series that like is super well known, so we're fine if people just assume this is the first game, you know. So they just dropped the two. Yeah, the first one came out in 1999. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Outcast Two. I'm, I'm curious about it. Is it is uh. It is a double A game, you know, politely, uh, w from what I played, right? It doesn't feel like this big triple A game, but like sometimes mm -hmm. I really like those kinds of experiences. Um, if they if they're able to sort of um, focus on mechanics and ideas, and then th those like overcome whatever shortcomings there might be in like the way the game feels or looks. Um, so I'm hopeful that Outcast to uh, Outcast New Beginning rather will be something like that. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's what it will be. I don't know. Is that coming out this year? I believe it is set for this year, yeah. This feels like I had like two paths to go, and then I picked this one. But I don't know, maybe I didn't. Got to dodge these blades here. Let's see. Whoosh. The um the act of running along a wall and leaping from it is uh feels really good. I like that. Yeah, more games should do that. More games should do like that. Like a third first person shooter, maybe. Drinking water to In get the my health back. Series. Speaking of, let's take a sip of water, everybody. Stay hydrated. Wes, water's that thing you drink in the morning before coffee? I do. I drink <laughs> at least 16 ounces, and uh, I doctors say it's better for me, so I have to believe it's doing wonders for my, my health. I think about I, you said that on a podcast that like you go out of your way to make water the first thing you drink on it, and I've been and I think about that a lot. I'm like, I need to do that. That's smart. I need to do that too. It it completely makes sense, and I think it does. Damn it. 
uh, make me feel better. It's kind of like a nice little energizing start, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't just want to get right to the coffee in the morning. <laughs> By the way, drinking water uh, messed me up there because uh, I wanted yeah. to fill the last bit of my health and the door closed on me. Greatest water drink animation in all of gaming. Keep me wrong, <laughs> yeah, says right, Nickel Canvas. Yeah, that's good. Can you hear me? I can't think of any off the top of my head, so Sands of Time can have it. They can have it. There's got to be a good one, though. Especially in that era where they couldn't animate water, so it just looks like, you know, a plastic rod <laughs> falling out of a glass yeah. bottle or something, you know? Like, whenever Link drinks milk in Ocarina of Time, it's just like, it just looks weird, right? There's no lists online of best water drinking I in games. What that means top five. That means that we need to write. <laughs> Matt's uh, going to be like, can you guys stop playing up with these? <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, we, there's, there's a really good crying scene. Uh, weird thing to call out, I suppose, in Like a Dragon Gaiden, uh, the man who raised his name. Mm. There's just a really good scene of someone crying. I think I've seen it on... Crying. Is it someone looking at a picture? Yeah. No spoilers. Yeah, I've seen it on... Oh, fair. But uh, yeah, Marcus and I were like... What's that best crying? Who's the best crying in gaming? Who has it? You know, it's like guidance number one. Yeah. And I was like, maybe that scene of when Zelda cries in Breath of the Wild, like that's number two, maybe. <laughs> that's a really good there's animation. A, there's good crying in Final Fantasy X. Yeah, oh, yep, yep. Um, Last of Us probably has some good crying, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, that's his dad. Oh, no. Oh, this is like a boss fight. I forgot about this. Get your swords out, you fool. We gotta kill your dad. <laughs> See, best crying in video games. It's, I feel like the I feel like the dad takes a lot. It's... Oh, get out of there, Prince. Oh god, there's a lot of these guys. Oh, he doesn't he does not like me jumping on top of him. The the red guys don't care. They're like, whatever, do what you gotta do. Blue guys having none of it. Um, did you notice, Wes? Probably maybe not, but the um when you get the midair dash in Lost Crown Um or Lost Throne. <laughs> Uh, it is ba it is essentially the animation, um, the run the wall running animation from Sands of Time. Oh, uh, that's cool. Like I uh, didn't piece that together, but I can see that now. Yeah, I mean, I, without having played the original, you know, I'm not sure why, why you would notice why that would stand out to you. But that was like when I, even in the preview build, when I unlocked that uh, for I wrote a big piece on the game. I was, that was like the first thing I noticed. I was like, oh my gosh, that's that's the running animation from Sands of Time, or at least, you know, something equivalent to it. It's like very close. Yeah, I, I, got, I definitely got the sense that Lost Crown, now I don't even know what the game's called. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, no one knows, that's the problem. Was trying to like, I guess like spiritually allude to Sands of Time. And I don't know if maybe that's just all of Prince of Persia's about sand and time and, and stuff. No, not uh, necessarily. Yeah, there's definitely like themes in Lost Crown that feel sands of time-ish. Yeah, I mean, time manipulation is kind of a, has become a Prince of Persia thing, because even the original game, there was a time limit on getting through the sort of the jail. Like, you, you had to beat it in an hour, which was kind of uh, strange at the time. Like, there wasn't anything really doing that at the time. All right, so I think, I think I'm just going to die, because... I um I like lost a lot of health, so it didn't wouldn't really benefit me a lot to like just rewind a little bit. I could because you could rewind every time you take a hit, sort of. Yeah, but you run out. Yeah, you run out of rewind Eventually. time, and it's also kind of tedious. It's like I'll just I'll just take some damage. I'm not too worried about it. We won't we won't see it. Um, yeah, uh, in this one hour of replay. But another another thing that has become like when video games do it, I just like it. And I don't it's not like I think of it as a Prince of Persia reference or anything, but I just think it's a nice touch. Is um the prince over the course of the game, like, uh changes the way he looks because like 
he hits a mm. point where he like has so much damage on his sleeves that he takes off his sleeves. Uh, it's so hot out that he starts he stops wearing a shirt at a certain point, you know, things like that. And I was I the thing that I like about it as like a, a narrative game is it's like you get to see the progression of everything he's going through in a simple way of like oh it's like it's 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 a uh, it's just a design you know a, an art design thing but he he is changing over the course of the game like this is this is all happening and taking a toll on him and like you know and it's changing his clothes which is like I just like that little touch it just makes it feel like the the this whole story the narrative's taking place over a specific amount of time like the Arkham games are really good about that too like Batman yeah. is like outfit just it's becomes one more, night right it gets more and more messed up over the course of the game and i always appreciated that like by the end you know yeah he looks all disheveled and his like there's like rips all over his suit and stuff i just i really like that kind of thing and this is the first time i noticed it uh in a video game i'm trying to think of examples now but i can't nickel canvas is john mclean and die hard duke Faison says leon taking off his jacket yeah, I yeah, yeah. Leon taking yeah. off his jacket is a good one, and I remember, I it's maybe it's silly, but like when he does that in Resident Evil Four, I think of Prince of Persia, because like there's like these moments that it's like he has a cutscene where he like tears off his sleeves. There's a moment. There's a cutscene where he like decides to take off uh, his armor. There's a moment where he decides to take off his shirt, you know, and he's all like bruised yeah. and sweaty and messed up, and it's like Prince really like, going through something here, you guys. He's having a he's having a hard day. Can't even get laundry done. It's terrible. Tough out here. Oh boy, I'm doing really bad. I'm sorry. I don't remember this being so hard. Cause I'm in my memory, you just fight a couple of dudes and then you gotta focus on the king for a while. There's, there's a lot of guys here. I need to. What I need to do is like rely on those powers more and stuff. Like making them go slow motion, that kind of thing. The Batman cape always degrades, says Lazarus Orange. It's not tied to how much you get beaten up. I I, I, I think it's randomized to a certain degree, if that makes sense. Yeah. Maybe. Or maybe like when you complete certain quests, they kind of change. Yeah, like I think everyone's oh, looks... cape looks different by the end of the, any of the Arkham games, but I, I could be totally wrong about that. I'm not sure. And then in Arkham Knight, he does in the early hours go through like a costume change pretty early on, where he's like, I got to break, I got to break out the big suits here. I think it's the line of dialogue okay. that Kevin Conroy says. Time to break out the big suit. There is a list for characters that change over games. Oh, really? That's stranding. Yeah. We, the other two, no lists. Uh, top water <laughs> top animation, water. top crying animation, we can write. But okay. <laughs> the gamer has a pretty good list. Death Stranding, Wolfenstein, Life is Strange 2, Plague Tale, Resident Evil 4 remake. Yeah. Oh, these are more Tomb recent Raider, ones. that's a... Yeah, two no, the, yeah, the 2013 one. Metal Gear Solid 5. Oh, wow. Yeah, it looks like he's going through something. Mass Effect. Yeah, San Andreas. That's kind of... You can make them however you want. Yeah, but no prints on there, huh? Well, I'm at number four, Spec Ops. Number three, Seafood. Uh, Last of Us Part 2. Yeah, that's pretty good. But I don't know if it's like static. Or like, I don't know if it changes based on the game. I think it's just narratively. I don't know. Red Dead Redemption 2 is number one, so no Prince of Persia. See, the, so the you're actually just wrong. ones I feel like are almost cheating because it's like, you know, Arthur doesn't, I mean, he does change, but like you could have him grow a beard and stuff. That's like up to your discretion, right? Isn't it? Yeah, same with San Andreas. Yeah. I think your character like gains weight and loses it based on what you do, right? Yeah. See, that, that list is missing Prince of Persia. They did it first. And they did it the best. I don't know about that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> to make I can't stand by either of those claims, but I really enjoyed it in, uh, in Prince of Persia. Crater Gaming says, what about Ocarina of Time? Link becomes a full adult. That yeah, is true. That's true. He do. There's games like God of War 2 where when you upgrade your character, they change, which I like. Like the armor changes and stuff. Yeah. But that's different from this. This sounds purely narrative. Yeah, it doesn't really... You get some swords that hit harder over the course of the game, but, like, it's not... Mm. They're just in a moment in the story, right? It's like, now you can hit enemies once instead of twice. It's not really, like, a big... 
It's not like you're looking at stats or anything, you know? Golly. Yeah. Why are there so many of you guys? Huh? Metroid Dread, actually. That's a, both upgrades and narratively, because you get the upgrades at certain points in the game. Okay. But you start off with, like, a basic suit, right? And then... Yeah, that's true. I don't remember how to... Hello, Alex. I don't remember how to Benny kill can... my dad. Oh, I forgot there was a block button. That might have been helpful. Was he uh, infected by the sands? Yeah, time? they've all become, like, sand zombies. And the prince is just like, okay, I'm going to kill him. Well, he... Uh, we... You missed the animation, Marcus, but he seemed really beat up about it. He had a mm. he had a moment where he went like this. Oh no! <laughs> you missed that. <laughs> what do I do? How do I kill you, Dad? Okay, so I can jump on your back. Okay. I couldn't. Jump Alex on says he would love to be a sand zombie back. right now on a beach somewhere. Come to Florida. You can be a sand zombie on any of our beaches at any time. Is that what you call tourists that annoy you, Wes? Um, no, it's just we drink too much on beaches and then the sun <laughs> does its thing where you get dehydrated. I did a mission in Like a Dragon last night where I had to walk around the beach and just look for people who are exhausted and give them water <laughs> and tell them, is that stay a, hydrated. Is that like a side quest? Or? Yeah, it's a side quest. I didn't know the game was that wholesome. I knew it was wholesome, but that's Oh, yeah, no. That's Ichiban, awesome. yeah, he's very wholesome. He just helps everybody who needs help. I wish I could just tell myself to just start the game without any prior knowledge of the series, but it's tough. And I'm about to beat Persona 5 Royal, and I think I need a break from 100-hour uh, RPGs. You sure you don't want to jump right into uh, Persona 3 Reload? That is actually tempting, because people say that 3 is arguably the best, yeah. which is wild to me, because I'm, I'm loving 5. Uh, but I don't got it in me. I, uh, my goal, my goal this year is is I want to beat Like a Dragon and beat Persona Three. The lofty goal. That's my goal. But it's doable. From here next time. And then, uh, but then I I will probably play uh, Rebirth in there as well. Yeah, that's one that you pretty much have to play. Uh, otherwise, you risk getting spoiled on things that yeah. might change or might not change. We'll see. I will say I'm not as quite as invested in the story of rebirth as most people because i didn't i didn't play the original oh uh, okay so, so you're i won't be heartbroken just kind of along for the wild yeah right I, yeah I, I won't be too heartbroken if something gets spoiled for me but i still like to avoid spoilers you know if i'm if i'm gonna play it i'm gonna not read about it ahead of time yeah kind of thing, but. i would hope people are kind about the potential spoilers in that game since it's apparently ending right around with one of the biggest plot points of the game happens the but original. it's the internet i'm sure the second someone finds out they're gonna be it's gonna be on twitter and stuff and i'm just looking forward to seeing if it is changed or not but we'll see yeah i think you're probably on the review for that one right yes so yeah you'll you'll, you'll certainly <laughs> i want to review spoilers. it but i also kind of wanted to do it so that i could <laughs> have it done before uh people have the potential to spoil it online yeah because i yeah, am i uh, big on spoilers one big thing i uh, that is very nice about uh reviewing video games on on for an outlet is like i really embrace and appreciate the opportunity to play a game without even the danger of spoilers you know yes yeah um like i playing tears of kingdom without without even literally talking to anybody else about it until i was done was just like oh wonderful yeah that's i amazing. love that you know yeah you I couldn't even Ragnarok google something if i wanted to though. it was so great yeah that's the hard part about reviewing games, though, is if you get stuck, though, you're often just kind of on your own. Yeah. You can kind of, if you know other people reviewing it, you can maybe be like, hey, did you get past this puzzle? But yeah. uh, like in Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, which I reviewed, there were some times where I'm like spending way too long overthinking a puzzle and I didn't have a guide I could look up or someone yeah. to talk to. Um, I also, do you do you play this uh, game that I like to call, is it a, is it a, bu is it a bug or do I just not know what I'm doing? <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> I play yeah. that game a lot where I'm like, I think I think I just don't know what I'm doing, but it's entirely possible that this could just be a bug and this part of the game is broken. I don't know. Yeah. It morphs too. I'm like, okay, maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. And then if I've spent 30 minutes, I'm like, this has to be a bug. I'm not this silly. I'm not this 
dumb, and then it turns out I am. Yeah, it's nope, just a, that's two usually minutes what it is, like seventy percent of the time. Yeah. Yeah, Nickel Canvas says, "Imagine the Witness." That game is awesome, but wow, I've yeah. never touched the Witness because the way people talk about it does not sound like the kind of gaming experience I want. I don't. Uh, I like the Witness a lot. Yeah. Did you have to have have like a notebook with you well, beside you pretty, and stuff? I played it pretty early, it? so I played a lot of it without any sort of. Uh, feedback you know without any ability to sort of oh you, oh you mean like taking notes in general yeah like people say like i've got a whole journal i wrote in while playing the witness for puzzles and i'm like i don't know if i want to do that uh yeah i think i did have some notes yeah um mm. it wasn't crazy i i also i like never quite finished the witness i think i i didn't like you know 60 70 percent or something like that you know like i did a lot of it but i hit a point where i was like I, I've solved all the puzzles I want to solve, if that makes sense, yeah. you know? Um, because it is a game that doesn't really feel like it's um, insisting you see the end, if that makes sense, right? It's like, we made yeah. this weird world with all kinds of puzzles, and we want you to explore it. Um, there's not really a narrative per se. There is a little bit of one, but mostly we just want you to, like, enjoy the sort of a jubilation of figuring something out, right? Uh, which that game yeah. is very good at. Ghost of Mitch Hedberg, I think. Did you have any issues with the Four Doors puzzle in the Lost Crown? I think I know what you're referring to. And if I, that is one spot of the game, probably the, the spot that confused me most. I spent a lot of time uh, on that area of puzzles and um, I was overthinking it completely. <laughs> uh, still challenging, but I overthought it very much. Uh, one thing I like, Wes, is uh, any source of water is like opportunity for health rejuvenation. So this is as much a health resupply oh. as like a little fountain and stuff. Which this is, cool. is that's just like Florida. We see <laughs> water, right? we drink it. <laughs> Does it matter if it's filled with lily pads and, and algae? Yeah, it's, it's it's good. It's flavor. Oscari Joe 09. Speaking of Super Nintendo World, I saw a picture of Zelda producer Eiji Anuma and Shigeru Miyamoto from Nintendo on the construction site of Super Nintendo World in Orlando, Florida. Yeah, as a Florida resident, I've been following a lot of uh, rumors and developments uh, on that. Universal's building a third park called Epic Universe, which is rumored to have a Legend of Zelda Nintendo expansion. Um, people don't know what, but now it seems all but confirmed that that's happening considering Anuma and Miyamoto over there, which is awesome. Guess I gotta uh, go back to Florida, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's the one good reason to come to Florida is <laughs> we have cool theme parks. Uh, but Wes, I, I, I think I think this is a good place to call it, man. I, do you feel like you have a sense of what this game is or what do, was I just I do, yeah. spending a lot of times on one puzzle? <laughs> no, no, I can for sure see this. And it's fun to watch as someone who loves Assassin's Creed, like how... Uh, much Assassin's Creed is just Prince of Persia. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to this remake for sure now. Yeah, I, I I really hope it comes together. I I yeah, I don't know what I want from it necessarily because like I am I'm that I'm I love this game so much that I wouldn't even mind the kind of remake that is like you know almost like the uh, Crash Bandicoot and Spyro approach recently. Yeah, where it's like it's the same man. It just looks better. Like I would okay I would be happy with looks, that. Yeah. But I understand that I think a lot of people want more than that uh, from, whoop, from. Uh, How long is maybe. is this game? This game's not very long. I want to say it's like eight to ten hours or something like that. I I could be wrong about that. Um, but I've played it a few yeah. times in my life, and, and in like yeah. you know a handful of sittings. It's not like some fifty-hour game that you know takes forever. It's like I would be like, oh, I'm gonna play through Sands of Time, and I would get through it in like a day or two. You know, like that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, great game. Um, I, I really love this game. It's it's very influential. It's very cool. I'm very excited to have Prince of Persia back uh, with The Lost Crown, which I've really been enjoying. Um, but it was nice to take a look back at Sands of Time. This is a great game, and I appreciate you sitting on it, Wes. Uh, I think it's it's I think yeah. it's fun for you to see it as someone who never played it. I think that's I think it's cool to see the game after having only played uh, Lost Crown. Yeah, thanks for having me on. This is cool. I wish that I had a. I don't think I have a way to play this. Uh, I imagine it's locked to like Xbox and You ready you ready for the big twist? You ready for the big twist, Wes? Yes. I'm playing this on Xbox Series X. Oh I just okay. It for that is like a couple bucks on That's uh, very interesting. I might yeah. just do that. Yeah, I don't think it's too oh, much. Oh that cover art. I definitely recognize that. That's cool. Yeah. 
But uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, Marcus and I will be back next week with more Majora's Mask, which has been super fun. Um, And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys later. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye, everyone.